Good morning, church. I want to welcome you to Legacy Church this morning. Just a few quick announcements, but before I give you your announcements, I want to say a happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there today and all the men that we honor in our lives. So we have some announcements, so please look at your bulletin with me. Thursday night, we had an awesome turnout for the homeschool families. We probably had about 21 kids show up with their families. I want to thank you to our uh, members and the individuals from our congregation that were able to come out and connect and get to know the families that we've been ministering to. So that was an awesome time, awesome outreach. Also, Saturday morning, we had our yard sale, the townwide yard sale. We prayed that not only would we raise the funds for Chain of Lights, which we exceeded, which was $300 for Chain of Lights, but we also invited people to church. We had gospel conversations. We made connections. It was an awesome, awesome outreach. Also, after service, join us for a small light lunch, and that's open to everyone to just stay for a little bit, have a light lunch with us. All right, lastly, looking ahead, you know, it's getting into the summer months. Put it on your calendar now. Sunday, August 21st, we are having our outdoor service for a cookout. So get it on the calendar, start inviting those family members, those friends. We're gonna have a bounce house. We're gonna have an awesome, awesome time. So we're really looking forward to that. God bless. Good morning, church. Good morning. So we're gonna worship the Lord in song. You can sit, you can stand, however you feel led. <coughs> the first song we're gonna do is called All in All because that's what God is to us. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I seek You are my all in all Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus. Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. When I am toss my shame, Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God.
Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. All right. <clears throat> so I know Pastor Don is going to preach on a psalm about thankfulness today. And uh, we thank God for both the good and the bad, but we especially thank him for the good, all the blessings he gives us. He is the fount, he is the source of all of our blessings. The song is a remembrance of that. Come now, fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Let's Praise thy mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, in thy hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, Interposed his precious blood. Oh, how grace a greater debtor I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Good morning, church. Happy Father's Day to all the dads and father figures out there. Um, this is our time of focused prayer. Um, we're going to be praying for dads and father figures. I know not everybody um, has had a good dad, but you, hopefully you've had a father figure in your life. I know um, for several people in my life, they've had uh, their grandfather or an uncle that um, was that dad to them that they needed. And so for me, I think it's honoring to them to honor them too with fathers. Um, we're gonna be praying also about restructuring and adding ministries. Um, so let me kind of briefly explain this. So uh, I've been reading a book called Simple Church and it's talking about how Churches tend to try to do things that are beyond their size, beyond their needs, like they're trying to be too much, and basically you burn out resources and the pastor burns out and stuff. So um, part of our restructuring that we're doing is yesterday was the last men's breakfast um, for the summer. Usually we continue on through the summer, but... Um, 
I've decided it's best for me to take the summer, rest a little bit, and then we're going to go quarterly so we can get guests coming in to speak to the men and um, <clears throat> really kind of really make it an exciting thing. I think if we do it every month, it kind of loses a little luster. And if it's something that you're looking forward to, it adds something. So um, that's part of what we're doing. And we're adding also come the fall Sunday school. Uh, I don't know if we're going to use that name. I know a lot of people would sit there. I know if Alex was here, it'd be like, school, no. Um, so we don't want to call it school. I'm thinking Sunday study or something in that uh, vein. But um, that's going to be led by Mike, who was up here, Warren, and myself. We've got different things that we have been on our hearts to teach you all. Um, yesterday, Mike was able to speak with the men a little bit, and um, I know I know a few of you said, sign me up for uh, that when that happens. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we want to pray for that. There's also something else that's on my heart that I'm praying about, and probably this July I'll call a church meeting to discuss that with you all. But um, that's why we're going to pray <laughs> right now. Um, then we got praises. So as Natalie said when she got up here, we had great outreaches yesterday and, and Thursday. I know several members of the church came out for the um, cookout that we had with the homeschool families and got to connect with them. And, uh, you know, there are some, like, that's the one thing is connecting is important because people look at the church and they wonder, do I really want to go into that church? You know, how do I know? So it's always good to connect with people because they get to meet somebody and they get to realize that, hey, you know, you're just like me. You know, the people tend to build up an idea in their heads of what church should be like or what they think the church is like. So when we meet with them, it changes their mind. It helps them in that focus. So um, that was that was great Thursday. And then yesterday we had the um, yard sale. And uh, I know after the men's breakfast, I got out there for a bit and got to connect, but uh, I know Betsy, Natalie, uh, Meg were all connecting with people and inviting people and having good conversations. And so that's the one thing that we want to do. We want to continue that. And we've got more coming up uh, this summer. As Natalie said, we've got our um, cookout there. Last year, we kind of kept it more in, in, in house. This year, we're kind of advertising it a little more out there to get people to come in you know and so that's what we're going to do so we're going to pray we're going to uh, praise for the good there um, the other thing is a gift from hope chapel um, most of you probably have known that the uh, lawnmower has been giving us hassles and thankfully we've got ed who um, is like scotty from star trek every time it breaks <laughs> down you know he's like i got it i get it a little more captain you know um, and he's got it running again, but, um, it, and it's not, I mean, it's a John Deere. It could go forever, you know, with the proper, you know, like somebody like really tuning it up and everything. But we had a Hope Chapel, um, Pastor Neil called me and wanted to know what was going on with that. And so I told him and he said, we've got money that we kept aside for, for churches that need stuff. That's a need, so they're giving us money to go shopping, as Ed now knows it. So Ed's going to shop. Ed's going to give us a little money for that one. He's going to take that um, up to, up to uh, New Hampshire for his place up there, and so it'll have a nice home, retirement. Um, <laughs> but the main thing is God blessed us. That's something that... Like, I know Ed's been praying for, Warren's been praying for, I've been praying for, Natalie's been praying for. If you've come to the Thursday, uh, the, well, now the Wednesday night Bible study, you'll learn. You know, we pray for stuff. We pray for stuff that doesn't seem like it's important. But God knows it's important. God sees it. And so there's an answer to prayer right there. Amen. And so um, that's awesome. Natalie has already said she, we've got a whiteboard that we put up in the room about four months ago. She's like, I've decided that this board's going to get wiped off on Thursday, and I'm going to put the prayer request on the left and the answers to prayer on the right. So people coming into this room, coming to meet you, coming to meet me, they'll see what we're praying for, and they'll see the answers to these prayer. 
but we want you to know that, you know, when you come to, to prayer group, you know, we're praying. We believe that God's going to pr- pr- uh, answer these prayers. It's like Mark Battison says, sometimes if you put yourself and you start praying, you give up too soon because you expect God to answer it. But in a 21-day prayer challenge, God might answer it within that 21 days. He might answer it after the 21 days. And that's been a prayer that we've had, like over a year. So we, uh, we're praising God for that. Um, the other thing we're going to do, we're going to pray for Sutton and the surrounding towns. If we're going to have these outreaches and connections, we need to be praying that we can connect with these people, um, that God's going to send us. There are people that are interested. And just because they didn't come today doesn't mean that they're not going to come next Sunday. You know, it's, it's just like these prayers that we're praying. We're praying, we're trying to get them, we're trying to get them connected. I, in fact, yesterday, Natalie and, and Meg told me that there were people that were sitting there that, that were coming in and going, yeah, we know you because, you know, we see your husband on, on the um, TV here and we, you know, you're, you're praying for us on, on the Sutton site. So it's these little things that people see that show that they connect. And so we just keep praying. We just keep praying. God will answer the prayers. All right? So we're going to pray for that. And then finally, we're going to pray for the Baptist churches of New England. Um, And, you know, usually we put a church to pray for. But I want to pray for all the churches this week because um, it's just on my heart. I know a lot of them are doing a lot of good. Summer is always a tough uh, time for some churches and great time for others so I want to pray for them they are our brothers and sisters they have helped us they are still helping us you know as we, we've seen in the praises and so I just want to lift them up today in prayer so let's go to the Lord in prayer Father in heaven we thank you for this day we thank you that you are a God who answers you are our all in all you are the one who hears our prayers, lifts us up when we're down, gives us everything that we need. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that uh, you would just fill this place with your Holy Spirit and presence today, and that we would be able, just as we've already drank from uh, worshiping you in music but that we would also be able to feast on your word and study. So we just pray for that right now. Father, we thank you and pray for all the dads and father figures in our lives, those who are no longer with us, those who are still with us. We just thank you for them. And Father, for those that are with us, we ask that they would be blessed today, that they would have good days. And Father, that we would be able to spend time with them. And Father, for the fathers that are here that they would be blessed, Father, by spending time with their children and those who are like children to them. Mm -hmm. Father, we also uh, pray for uh, just the things going on here as we're looking to add ministries, as we're looking to kind of tweak things and, and adjust things and different things, Father. We pray for the wisdom. We pray that we would be able to do these so that we don't burn ourselves out, but that we also are able to do the ministry that you have called us to do here, and that we would be able to just be a light to this area because of it. So, Father, as we make these adjustments, as we pray and, and pray and, and just struggle and wrestle with what to do in other areas, that you would just reveal it to us and speak to us. Father, we also lift up to you uh, these praises. We thank you, Father, that um, Thursday and yesterday we had um, great times, great ways of connecting with people. And, Father, we just pray that um, they would know that they are loved and blessed and that they have a place to come to here. Father, we just pray for more opportunities like that throughout this summer, throughout the rest of this year. And that we will see the harvest that you are planting through these meetings father so we just thank you for that father we also thank you for um pastor neil davidson and hope chapel and their gift to us and father i i just pray that you would give um ed the knowledge as he he goes around looking for the best that we can get father um to to do the work that him and warren and jeff do around here with the mowing and 
just, Father, um, we thank you and we just give you all the honor and glory in that, Father, for answering a prayer that has been on our hearts for, for well over a year right now, Father. So we thank you for that. Father, we also pray for Sutton and the surrounding towns. If we are praying for these outreaches, Father, we pray that you would just start speaking to the hearts and minds of the people that, you know, wonder what's going on here. We heard that so many times, this we, the, these two outreaches, you know, they see the cars in the, in the lot and they're wondering what's going on and they want to pull in, but they're not sure. So, Father, if those people are out there right now, if they're feeling that, Father, draw them in. Like so many here have been drawn in, we pray that you would do the same now, Father. And, Father, we also pray for the other churches of the BCNE. Those churches that are are doing outreaches now this weekend, have been doing them, will do them. Those that are doing VBS, those are that are doing missions work, those that are just helping out their, their fellow brothers and sisters in other churches. And we just pray that you would be with them. Father, for those that they, they, they're going through bad times, we pray that you would lift up the pastors just as we sang, that you would just lift them up, fill their cups, and make them see that you're not done with them. You're still doing a work through them, Father. So right now, we just pray for all that. And Father, we pray that as we learn about the psalm of thanksgiving, that your spirit would just enlighten the scriptures to us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, this morning we're in Psalm 16. And it's preserved me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, my goodness extendeth not to thee. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, their sorrows shall be multiplied that has after great another God. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, and of my cup thou maintenest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me to pleasant places, yea, I have godly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At that right hand there are pleasure for everyone. So we're in our third week of Summer in the Psalms, and the psalm that we have this week is a psalm of thanksgiving, which that was Psalm 16. Now, let me just tell you, a psalm of thanksgiving is similar to a song of praise, a psalm of praise. Um, you know, it's got this time that they celebrate God, that they're lifting God up, however, they share, even though they share narratives of God's goodness and typically honor specific things that he has done, this in, can also include heard and answered prayers, stories of deliverance, and God-given victories. And we see this. We see examples of these outside the Psalms. If you've ever uh, studied the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, uh, Hannah has a psalm of praise when she sits there and gives thanks to God for Samuel. Um, also, we see this uh, where Simeon, after Jesus comes into the temple to be presented, Simeon, who has waited so many years for the Lord to bring him, show him Messiah, 
he gives this short psalm of thanksgiving to God. And so the psalms of thanksgiving, we can see they are throughout the scriptures. They are throughout the places. These are the things that are prayers given in gratitude from the heart. When the heart is full, these psalms teach us how we are to give thanks to God. Many of us, you know, we said it last week, many of us struggle. We struggle to give thanks to God in the good and the bad. And today, being Father's Day, this is a time to be thankful for our dads, for those father figures. But for some people, they never had a good dad. And so this is where God reveals himself to be father, too. He is our heavenly father. Uh, I wrote a little tribute to my dad yesterday uh, on Facebook, and it was during that time that he passed on, I realized my strength was from my heavenly father. And I realized at that moment, struggling through 38 years of you know, 34 years walking with Christ, I never understood God as Father until that very moment. So this is a good time to give thanks to our Heavenly Father on Father's Day. So we look at this. There are things that people give thanks for. They're given through birth, death, victory, all sorts of lifetimes. And we can see where the similarities between the Psalms of Praise and the Psalms of Lament are also in here. But at the same time, the writer reminds us of what they went through and then thank God for delivering them. One way to look at this is it, you have to, the news that you have to tell everyone. In other words, you get that one thing, that one bit that is so exciting, you just can't hold it anymore, you know? Um, how many of you, when you found out, I know we don't have too many grandparents in here, but how many grandparents, when you found out you were going to be a grandparent, you know, and your child's, you know, going to be a mystic man and you're like, right now on this. The first point is this. The praise is all the Lord's. And it begins in verses 1 through 4. It says, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. The, their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out. How are, I will take their names on my lips. So, let me explain something too. So if you look at the beginning, you'll see this term. This is a mictum. There is multiple terms that you see listed in the Psalms at the beginning. Um, to the choir mask. Or one might say a prayer, another might say um, a, you know, a, a, a prayer of praise. You, know, you see these things. Let me just say this. If you ever see those, you can, you can look at them. They may be musical terms, they may not. Mictum, the term has been lost over time. Um, the, the writers, the, the translators say this could be a liturgical term or a musical term, but they don't know. I just wanted to put that out there because the main thing is this is both a psalm, a song, and a prayer of praise, a prayer of thanksgiving. David uses a term for God that we will read over and over in the psalms in this point, and that is that God is a refuge. When you walked into the door, above the door, you'll see we have 
a sign that says, my refuge. And it actually is quoted from, I think, Psalm 80, uh, 92 or 91 on there. And it's to find that when we come into this place, you know, this place is our refuge. This is the place where if you've been beat up during the day and everything, you find that refuge. You get that refuge. And that's what David saw in his life. He saw that this was a refuge. This meant that no matter the situation, God was the person that brought peace to him. No matter what was going on, no matter, you know, as we studied last week, his kids were, were at war or whatever, trying to usurp him. He still found peace in God. He still found that refuge. He knew where he had to go to get the best parts of the day. And it all, as we see, it all points back. His joy was in the Lord. And he points out that those who seek another God will find no joy or peace. And it's true. They'll only find sorrow. It's true because when we look at and we study the scriptures, when we study people in life, we see that you can be the richest person in the world. You can be Hugh Hefner. Well, not Hugh Hefner. What was his name? Hughes, yes. I knew Hughes was in the name, but I'm going, no, Hugh Hefner is not the guy I want to quote. Um, but Hughes, he was this rich multimillionaire, you know, had the uh, screen, you know, the, the picture company. He built the Spruce Goose, you know, and basically, even though he had all this money, he died living in this room, afraid of germs. They said his nails were grown out, his hair was grown out. He looked like the wizard from, you know, Harry Potter or something. He didn't find joy in his money is the point. And people say, oh, all I need is just a little bit of money and I'd be happy for the rest of my life. No, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit during uh, the men's breakfast yesterday, you know. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. And we kind of think that, you know, a lot of people misquote that saying money is the root. It's the love of money. And the thing is, is when you get a little bit, you want more. You want more and you want more. And the only thing that we should want more and more and more of is the love of God. Finding that peace. And God points this out in Exodus. He talks about this. He says, you shall have no other gods before me. Right in his Ten Commandments. And it's easy for us to put false gods. It's easy for us to do that. Man can make anything a god. They can do it with money. Jesus points it out. He says, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So it's this thing that we, we wrestle with. We see it in the world today. You know, people are all talking about money, 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 you know. And all you got to do is this. And, you know, get into Bitcoin and get into this and invest here. And, you know, buy Apple stock. And, and people become so obsessed with it. And it takes people away. We can do that thing with TV. You know, people get obsessed with shows. People get obsessed with movies. People get obsessed with music. People get obsessed with books. People get obsessed with almost anything that takes our minds off of the scriptures. And it's like what we talked about yesterday in the men's group. We talked about how pride was the first real sin. It was pride that took Satan down. And the thing is, when we make these false gods, we're saying we don't need God. And we get a pride in ourselves that Satan has whispered in our ear and told us to. And David is sitting here saying, no, that's false. I have everything I could want, but I still need God. David knew this and purposed it to always find refuge in God. David does things here. He speaks for the Lord. When you look at the verses, 
in uh, verses 3 and 4. Well, yeah, 3 and 4. He's speaking as if he is the Lord there. And that's an interesting thing because the only people that ever spoke for the Lord were the priests and the prophets. Kings very rarely spoke for the, for the Lord. If you go back in the story of David uh, in 1 Samuel, when you're studying the life of David and you come to Saul, Saul's biggest sin that takes the kingdom away from him is when he sacrifices. He puts himself in the position of priest and he does the sacrifice that Samuel says, wait for me to get there to do it. David is different. David fills in two of the three offices of the Messiah. He fills in the king and he fills in the prophet. And we can see where there is another possible part where he's priest, but we'll get to that a little later. But these two qualifications that David have are prophet and king. Many men would fall short of meeting these qualifications of prophet, priest, and king. Melchizedek is the first one we meet in Genesis when Abraham comes to him and Abraham bless, you know, sits there and speaks over him. And then Abraham sacrifices and gives him 10% of what he has to honor him. Melchizedek was the king of Salem. He was the king of Jerusalem. But he was also a priest. He was of some priestly order that when we read the book of Hebrews, we learn that this priestly order is a, something we don't know too much of, but we know one thing, that Melchizedek and Jesus are part of that same priesthood. And because Jesus is part of that same priesthood, we, being covered with his blood, have been brought into that priesthood too. David, though, sits here in this. And in these two verses, he speaks as for the Lord. And it is here that a prophet and a priest would do this. And let's remember that David is the one that the Messiah is most closely compared to. Whenever people looked for Messiah, who did they look for? They looked for one who was like David. Now, they had it wrong. They thought he was going to be a warrior like David. They didn't realize that he was going to be a man of God like David. David shows elements of all these offices, though. But it is only Jesus who could fulfill the ministry of the Messiah in this perfect sacrifice. David knew as king that money was temporary but life in God is eternal. That's where he points us to in the next point. He says, the answer is the Lord's. In 5 through 8, says this, the Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night all my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I will not be shaken. So let me say this. This, this is kind of cool how God does these things. Of course, I, I talked with Mike yesterday at the breakfast and the thing was, was several years ago, several years ago, uh, there was this song, a simple song, simple worship song titled All in All. It wasn't too theologically deep. It's got some good theological roots there. But it was simple. Two simple verses and a repeat of the chorus. Now, I mention that because for four years when I, after I graduated and I went into the military... I backslid. When I backslid, I didn't think God wanted me back. And it was interesting times. You know, my uncle, my dad, they would speak to me, and, and I remember them bringing me one of my old Bibles up to Maine, 
and I'd be in the cabin with my dog, and I would find that time to read, and slowly began to rebuild my relationship with God. But it wasn't until um, I had come back home, and I had started going to the church that Natalie was going to, me and her were dating at the time, and her dad paid for me to go on the men's retreat, and at the men's retreat, this song was played. And that song spoke to me. You know, music is a wonderful thing. Music speaks to our hearts. It speaks to our hearts. And this is a lot of debate. We can get into that in another time. But it speaks to our hearts. Music is something that God enjoys. And somehow that song really stirred in me and made me realize that I was building up a false god in my mind and that God would take me. He's, got, he's lifted me up. He's always been there for me and he's all that I need. And I remember weeping and crying and I was trying to be the Donald McKinnon I thought I should be and not the Donald McKinnon that the Lord designed me to be. But it reminded me that in my life Jesus was always there and that he was stirring in me near the end of that journey. And that's what brings me here today. David is a man who went from being a shepherd boy to a king. He knew that the Lord was his all in all. And nothing has not been given to David's own hand except by that of the Lord because of his great love for him. Notice that David chooses this, that in doing this, he sees that the Lord is in his life, that God speaks to him at night, and it is significant when we think of this. Nighttime, according to the American Journal of Medicine, is when we let things go in our heads. We overthink things, and what happens when we overthink? When we overthink, we're usually wrong. When we overthink, you know, the, you know, when you took your test in high school, they always said, go with the first choice. That's the thing. Why do we not go with our first choice? We overthink it. And so David's pointing us out that even at this moment, even at this moment where he's overthinking things, God is what's anchoring him down. And you notice this. He calls the Lord his right hand. That is a place of honor in the ancient times. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven, right? So there's this place of honor. It is this place of honor. And Peter talks about this in his letter. He says, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers having been subjected to him? It is the etiquette to sit at the right hand of the host. Because that's it. You, the, whoever is there, if it's the king, if you're sitting at the right hand, you are second only to the king. And then the person at the left is second only to the, set, to the person on the right. This kind of brings you into more perspective about when James and John were arguing with Jesus about who was going to sit at his left and who was going to sit at his right hand. And Jesus said, I don't know who's going to do that. It's for the Father to choose. But it reminds us, it tells us that this is it. This is what's important to us. And for David, it was important. He saw the Lord as his good right hand. Something Warren always says about Natalie, she's my good right hand. Whenever he prays for us on Tuesdays at the um, elders meeting, he always prays for Natalie, Dawn's good right hand. So these are the things that we see. It's a position of honor and etiquette. And there's a strong emphasis on sitting at the right hand of God that should also give us these insights. Because David honors the Lord. He knows nothing can happen to him. And that is true. When we read his story, even with all the bad things that happen, God lets him live a full life. And he dies an old man in his bed. 
no matter what has happened before, God honors him because he's honored God. It leads us to our third and final point. Thankful for the joy of the Lord. This is in 9 through 11. It says, Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul in Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So as you see, David sees the Lord as his joy. He sees him as his faith and trust is fully in the Lord. He sees all that the Lord is doing for him. And the first verse shows that he trusts the Lord with his life. And it mirrors another psalm verse of David's. And this one is important in my life. And I'll explain it after the point. But Psalm 73, 26 says this. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength, is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Now that psalm was my, my grandfather's as he battled multiple sclerosis. And at that time there was no... No medicine like there is today for people that battle it. So basically for my grandfather, there was only so little they could do, and it was a death sentence. But it's those things that he held on to. He held on to because he knew the Lord, and he knew that even at the end of this life, no matter what happened, he was going to be with the Lord, and he wanted me to know that. He would sit me on the bed that they had and always read his Bible to me and always remind me that that was the most important part of the day. But I'm going to say this. As, much, as nice as this reads, and I don't have it on the screen, as nice as this reads, that's the ESV version. I love what the New Living Translation says. We talked, we talked about translations yesterday and how cer certain translations really emphasize, like Mike was saying, you know, Pastor Don's got to have, you know, multiple versions as he's doing these psalm, you know, doing these um, sermons and stuff, and I think the NLT speaks more for my grandfather, and I think it's only fitting on Father's Day. I honor him by reading it in this translation. It says, my health may fail, and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. I think that's, that's a more beautiful version of that scripture. And even though he died of that terrible disease, he knew that it was just his body that died and he went to heaven. And he was spending time with, you know, all my loved ones. He's spending time with David. You know, he's probably asking David, what made you write that? Tell me, brother. You know, I can just hear him. But this is the thing. David knew this. David knew that no matter what, no matter what was going on, he was so intimately connected to God that he just could not break from that. And that's what the song of thanksgiving is. It's knowing that we give thanks to God. It's knowing that we see this. We see this and we know this and we have so much to be thankful of because God is our portion. He is the one we are to be anchored to. But in between these, two ver in between these three verses, there's verse 10. And verse 10 is significant. Verse 10 is significant because this is a messianic prophecy. This is where David shows himself as the prophet. He writes it down. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. Now you might say, well, how is that a prophecy of Jesus? He's talking about that three days. Quick science lesson. Three days is when the body starts to rot. Okay? So somebody can be dead 
And you might not smell it, but that third day, you start smelling it. And this is what was significant. He knew this. God revealed this to him. And it's later on that Paul writes, when he's defending the deity of Christ and the truth that he was the Messiah in Acts 13, he writes, Therefore he says also in another psalm, you will not let your Holy One see corruption. So here's an interesting thing. As we study the Psalms, even though we're going through the different things, this is why people say, you need to read the Psalms. The Psalms are an important part. They lift you up, just as we sang. You know, They lift you up, they fill your cup, they sit there, they do so much for you. But at the same time, here's an interesting fact. Out of the 150 Psalms that there are in the Bible, 25 of them have a messianic prophecy. That means one-sixth of the psalms are prophetic. One-sixth of the psalms are David talking about the coming of his ancestor who is going to redeem him and who redeemed us. Nothing should bring us more joy than that fact. That when we read this, we read of the one who redeemed the world. He closes this portion too by stating that his joy is in the Lord and that the Lord makes known his paths. And that's the one thing. When we pray, you know, when we're praying, one of the things we need to do, we need to seek God's face, but we need to pray for his will. That is the most humble way we can pray. Pray for his will, not our will. And understand that what we want is not always what God wants. And David knew that. You know, we've talked about this. David could have easily had killed Saul many times and taken the throne. But he saw Saul as an equal. He saw Saul as one who was anointed by God to be king. And so he refused that. And he waited. And God honored him. And it's in that same way, it's in that same thing that we need to understand that even though when things don't always make sense, we need to lean heavily on the Lord, just as David did. And it's in this thing, we see this interesting juxtapose, this interesting juxtapose, because before David was saying, he's my right hand. But notice he says that he's now at the Lord's right hand forever. So it's this interesting juxtapose. And we don't know. We don't know where we're going to be. We don't know where we're going to be. I mean, there's a lot of people I know that will be in heaven. <laughs> I just don't care. I'm just looking forward to seeing family and friends I haven't seen in years. I'm looking forward to seeing the face of my king. But David sits here and he honors God. He gives us this thanksgiving it shows that his relationship with the Lord was this one that was strong and solid so here's my question with the next steps your next step have you learned to trust the Lord with your life do you have the understanding that nothing you have is not without the Lord blessing you David had that, and it's true for us today. Nothing we have is without the Lord's blessing. You know, I, 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 Natalie and me have said it, even though I've got to get a window thing on the car or out there. If you had told me five years ago I would have that truck out there, I would have laughed. But the Lord knew that what the, the vehicle I had was not going to, Last, it was already going through some, some problems after a year and a half. And the Lord provided. Like, all of a sudden, I knew, okay, I got to get a new vehicle. And I was like, I got I to gotta save up. And it was there. That's how the Lord works. You don't always see it. You don't always know it. But the Lord works. 
You're not going to be a rich and famous person. You're not going to, but the Lord is going to bless you. He's going to give you what you need, exactly what you need when you need it. It should humble us that we make it through tough times and that it's because the Lord is with us. When we get together during Thanksgiving holidays, we give thanks to the Lord for his blessings for the last years, just as the pilgrims did. So we have to understand that God is the one who gets us through all. So today, give him thanks. He's your dad, after all. Your heavenly father. Jesus said you can call him Abba, Daddy. And so we honor him, just as we're honoring our dads. Like I said, I, I wrote this thing, and I'll just say this, and this isn't about me, this is about God. This is where I knew that God was my father. My dad died 10 years ago on Father's Day. And that morning I went and I preached. And my pastor, my senior pastor, thought I was going to call him that night and say, I can't do it. But I knew I had to honor my dad. I knew if I, if I had said, no, nope, my dad, when I got to heaven, was going to smack me in the back of the head. So I knew I had to honor him. And I knew Natalie and everyone else was praying for me. And I can tell you, after my dad walked into heaven and I went home and I collapsed into bed, I finally cried. And it was at that moment I realized that from my getting up to my going to sleep, the Lord had carried me that day. And so... I am thankful for the Lord, and I want you to have that same thankfulness. I want you to build that same relationship. I want you to have that same thing, knowing that no matter what's going right or what's going wrong, God is walking with you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you, and Father, we just ask that This day that we honor fathers, this day we honor our grandfathers, our uncles, our brothers, those who were father figures to us, that we would not forget you, that we would not forget that you are father. You give us the good that we need. You correct us when we need correction. And you love us all the same with all our faults. And Father, I pray that for each and every one in here today, they would feel that love and connection that David did. And Father, help us to build that connection. Holy Spirit, please just help us to feel that connection to the Father and understand his love for us. That love that goes so deep, we cannot understand it this side of heaven. So we just pray for that right now. I pray that as we go out of this building and celebrate the day, Father, that everyone would be blessed and everyone would just come to that understanding. And I just pray that we would all have good days. A good day. And we thank you for it, for being our Father and giving us this good day. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So now is the portion of our service where we have communion. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do it the way since we didn't have the kids. So... Last, um, last Mother's Day, this past Mother's Day, um, I asked the husbands to come forward and get the elements for their wives. And today I'm going to ask the wives to come forward and get their elements, but also get the elements for their husbands. So Natalie, if you would come down and uncover and take. And I'm going to read the portion of scripture that we have, which is um, 
most closely always read. But it's this understanding of what went on um, after this. Let me read this right now. For I received from the Lord that I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take this body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And after this, after they have this, they go into the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus has a little meltdown. He's asking God to take the cup from him. After he's already done this. But then at that same moment, he realizes that's what the son, the human part, wants. But the son, the Godhead part, realizes that he has to do the will of the father. And the will of the father is that the son will lay down his life for the people. And that's what we celebrate. We celebrate that, that giving of that grace that God gave us. This is the loving father we serve. This is the loving father that we have. That he knew when he created Adam and Eve, he knew that they were going to sin. And he already had the plan B. He knew that the son was going to have to go and give up his life and give his righteousness to cover us. And this was the father's will. And the father did this because he loves us that deeply, that much. The Son loves us that deeply, that much. And the Spirit, too. Spirit is always forgotten. But if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, Jesus could not be fully resurrected. We could not go to the Lord in prayer. We could not worship here because it's the Holy Spirit that lives in us. It's like Mike pointed out correctly. We are the temple now. So as we come and we take of these elements... I'm going to give you all a time to take it. Wives, take it back to your husbands. And then I want you to take it together, right where you're at. I'll direct you, but take it right where you're at. So wives, let me come forward after I pray. After I pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this celebration of the life of your son. We thank you for the celebration that you orchestrated from the beginning of time, from the beginning of creation. And Father, though we are not worthy to call you children, it is because of your one and only begotten son that we can call you father. And so this Father's Day, we honor you and we thank you for doing this for us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So here is the body which is broken for us. Remember the love of the Father and the sacrifice of the Son.
and this is the new covenant. Take and drink all of it. This is that symbol of the righteousness. We can never get ourselves, but freely given by the Son for the Father. Father in heaven, we thank you, and we bless you and thank you and praise you for this. And now, Father, as we continue to worship you and give you the honor and glory through the giving of tithes, I pray that you would be honored by it. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. This song that I picked to do today, I did a lot of praying about because songs that I do, I ask the Lord what he wants me to do. And this is Father's Day, and so I wanted to do something that would honor the fathers. And what more than honor the Father, our Lord and our Savior, for what he did for us on Calvary. And so the name of this song is The Greatest Love Story.
right, stand for the benediction. This is based on Psalm 103, which is a perfect one for today. As you go out from here, remember this. God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so God has compassion on those who fear him, who listen to his voice, and who will do his will 